Praise the Lord, brethren. We want to bless God for another opportunity in His presence. Um, shall we pray? Father God, we bless you. We thank you. We adore your name. We thank you for a time out in your presence. We submit ourselves to you. Let not man speak. Father, please speak to us as father to children. Hide not your desire. Hide not your thoughts. Speak to us plainly. And grant us the humility to simply say, Yes, Lord, not to the arguments of men, but to your word. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. So tonight we are looking at preparing to pray. By the grace of God, we will be having our first um, 24 hours, 7 days prayer in the group. Where we we'll pray for everybody's prayer request. It is done in such a way that everybody will be praying for everybody. If you were to pick your own prayer request alone, <laughs> it wouldn't be nice, and that would be selfish. And God doesn't answer the uh, the prayers of selfish people. So what we'll be doing is that you'll be picking your prayers, and you'll be praying for every other person. You'll probably even skip yours, and just spend that week. Pray for other people. So when we have uh, about 200 of us or 800 of us or so um, praying for every other person's prayer point, that means you have over 500 people in one week on a daily basis praying for you. But here is the catch: What prayer point will they be praying for you? If your prayer point is wrong from the start, then the prayers you have sent for prayers we never get an answer. So we needed to look at it critically. How do we pray the right prayer point? How do we get to the right prayer point? How do we get to a place where the prayer points we are going to ask of God is going to be correct? Because this might be the reason why you have been praying for years and it seems as if there is no answer to that prayer. Probably you've been praying the wrong prayer points. So we're going to go through the Bible and ask and allow God lead us into the right set of prayer points so that next week when we'll be praying for one another, we'll not be praying the wrong prayer points for you. We'll be praying the ones that are right and correct that God will easily answer and the, the one that God is willing to answer. So let's go into the Bible. We are looking at the book of James chapter 4 verse 3 James chapter 4 verse 3 it says you ask and receive not because you ask amiss now let's stop there he's talking here about asking and receiving and he's talking to people and say and this is James the brother of Jesus speaking here and he said you've been praying you've been probably dropping prayer points from one mountain to another you've been going from one place to another dropping prayer points prayer this, prayer that, pray for this, pray for that and you've been doing that in different places and you've not received answers to your prayers and he says that it's not that God could not answer prayers because Jesus told us in the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 that ask and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. And Jesus went for that to say, For everyone that asks, receives. Everyone that seeks, finds. And everyone that knocks on the door, the door is opened unto them. There is a disconnect somewhere. Because Jesus is saying with all full confidence, that everyone that asks, always receives. Everyone that seeks, always finds everyone that knocks on the door the door is always open to them now but by james is telling us you ask and you do not receive so there was something wrong so the person that has been asking must have been asking wrong so he couldn't receive answers to prayers the person that had been seeking has been thinking wrong so he couldn't find and the person that had been knocking the door has probably been knocking the wrong door that was never meant to be opened. Because everyone that we ask, 
according to the proper way, will always receive answers to prayers. God does not ignore correct prayers. It has never happened. It will never happen. It, the day it happened that Jesus refused to answer a correct prayer, then Jesus is a liar. Because he said, everyone that asks always receives. That's a permanent statement. So we thank God for Brother James here, who is now trying to let us know that you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss. And we bless God that he did not stop there. Because if he had stopped there, some people would have given amiss a different meaning. That, oh, you, because you ask amiss, you did not, you, you missed your prayer points. You didn't ask it right. And they will probably, probably tell us that, um, Maybe because we didn't ask in the name of the God of our church. Or maybe because we didn't ask in the name of the God of our pastor. Or maybe because we didn't ask in the name of the God of our country. Or maybe because, you know, um, because you are just speaking in small, small tongues. I, I, I don't know where we got this from, but I now hear people say one tongue is small tongue and one tongue is growing tongue. Strange doctrines that cannot be found in the Bible. Some people might tell that because we are still doing uh, ba, 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 ba. that's why we are not getting answers. We should have grown to uh, ke, 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 ke. maybe that is uh, you know maybe that is the, the new level of prayer you know, that's why our prayers were not answered. People will have given their means different meanings, but we thank God for Brother James that God helped him to go further to explain what is the meaning of amiss. He said, You ask and receive not. Because you ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Oh, that is the meaning of the amiss. When we are praying to consume it upon our lust, then we are prayed amiss. What is our lust? And it's, it's the same uh, brother James that help us to explain what we could mean by praying Amiss or the kind of loss that we have. Or rather, it was Brother John. It was Brother John in the book of First John. First John chapter two verse sixteen. First John chapter two verse sixteen. He says, "For all that is in the world, what is in the world? First, the lust of the flesh. Second, the lust of the eyes." And taught the pride of life. So when Brother James was telling us that our prayers will be amiss if we are to consume that prayer upon our lust, and Brother John helped us to explain further that the kind of lust that we have is number one, the lust of the flesh. So when your prayer points are because you needed to satisfy your flesh. You feel ashamed by what God has provided for you. So you have covetousness. So the reason why you want it is because you want to satisfy your flesh. Such prayer points are not usually answered by God. Because you is a prayer point attached to lust. And my fear, and this is where I am careful, is because I have seen Satan answer such prayers. I have seen Satan meet the needs of people who have the lust for the flesh. If he can do it for those who do rituals, who do voodoo, and um, who join Illuminati, he also does it for those who ask in the church. Sometimes he decides to answer your prayers to tell I can lead you away from God. He gives you what we because the more you spend it on your lust, the more you are far away from God. That second, uh, that first John chapter two verse sixteen, he says that. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father. It's not of the Father. So, when you pray for a loss to satisfy your flesh, when the answer comes, 
you might give testimony in church. We might use the testimony to preach. And more people, so called, came for altar call. All they have done is get more of the lust of the flesh and lost the Father. So we can have a congregation in their millions praying for and to satisfy their flesh and Satan is answering such prayers and they thought that they are in God. And they thought that God is the one answering such prayers whereas Satan is the one answering them. They give testimony, Satan is not feeling bad because that testimony will only help more people want to come and do church ritual. You know church ritual now? <laughs> uh, sow seed and uh, you will get prosperity. Touch the hem of the garment of the pastor and you get prosperity. Um, do this and do that and you get money. Okay, Those are church rituals and Satan is behind them. Because that's not what Christ taught us. What he taught us is, com uh, is, is uh, contentment. So he is the one that determines what you have and how you grow. He is the one that determines every other thing. Are you getting it now? So, um, if your prayer point is to satisfy the flesh, the lust of the flesh, you just want to please your flesh, at the end of the day, Jesus won't answer such prayers. But Satan, the prince of the world, who is in charge of many things on earth, could answer such prayers. And when such prayers are answered, such persons become far from God. I have people who Satan has answered their prayers. And they are not even ready to listen to sound doctrine again. And Satan has raised ministers, anointed and great ministers, to teach along the line of satisfying the lust of the flesh. Another thing you could satisfy is the lust of the eyes. Is it when your eyes saw it, you wanted it? You now brought it to God in prayer? Have you forgotten that the Bible says the children of God, they move by faith and not by sight? When they pray, they pray by faith and not by what they saw. You saw it and you wanted it. You went to that church, you saw a huge congregation, that's why you're on your knees fasting and praying to God to enlighten your cause. You want what your eyes have seen. It is not what the Spirit has given you. If it is the Holy Spirit that has given you the body, you will have been satisfied with the 15 members that God gave you. You would have been satisfied. You would have been satisfied. The reason why you are not satisfied is because you are suffering from the lost of the highs. You saw somebody's church and you want it. You saw somebody's house and you wanted it. You saw somebody's car and you wanted it. You converted that to a prayer point. Jesus doesn't answer such prayer points. Unfortunately. Jesus doesn't answer such prayer points. The devil knows how to answer your prayer points. So since you have seen it and you want it by all means, Satan gives it. And that's why you see a lot of people they get colder by the day because Satan is the one giving them what they wanted. Because it's not of the Father. The Bible says in, in, the, in 1 John chapter 2 verse 16, it is not of the Father. You might religionalize it. You might spiritualize it. But as long as you saw it and you want it, it's the loss of the eyes. Many times the Bible says clearly that the ways of God are different from our ways. His thought is different from our thought. So if a person needs a car from God, he doesn't go to God and start saying, God, you see that Pajero Jeep, um, the BMW Jeep, that's God, that's what I want. You have seen it. A person who wants from God, who knows that I, I have a transportation challenge, I need to move from A to B, goes to God and say, God, Solve my transportation challenge. And God is free to solve it with whatever car he decides. And whatever he gives you, you are satisfied because you want to solve your transportation challenge. Praise the Lord. So, when somebody now comes to the altar to be teaching us, you know, 
the difference between a Benz and a Toyota. What is that person doing for us? Is bringing to us lots of the highs right there on the altar. Oh my God, we give you a privilege. Because when I was going to minister in London, it was a private jet I entered. What's that person selling to you? It's not selling Jesus. What's he selling? The lost of the highs. It's on the altar. It's everywhere. It's in many messages. And that's why a lot of people are losing their, their sight of God and they are getting the sight of men. So they go to church and they come back more jeered to chase after the things of the world and get the things of the world. Sorry? Sorry? Praise the Lord. So a lot of people are jeered to go after the things of the world. Right in the auditorium in the church. We paint the beauty of the world to them. The lust of the eyes is sold into their life. And they convert that to prayer points. And at the end of the day, Jesus does not answer such prayers. Satan will answer and Satan will not fight you to go and give the testimony. Because he knows that the more you give that testimony, the more people he gets to follow the laws of the highs. It's here in the Bible. And finally, the pride of life. Why do you want that prayer point? So that you can feel like somebody. So that you can become somebody. Why are you praying for greatness? Why are you fasting and praying that your ministry should grow? What exactly do you want to grow in that ministry? What are you looking for? You are looking for popularity? You also want to step into a church and everybody go on their knees to recognize the anointing of God in you. Is that not the pride in yourself that is pushing that prayer point? Why do you want a house? So that when your in-laws come, they will now see that you are also somebody. That's pride. Why do you want that prayer point? What is the purpose behind the prayer point? Why? Because you want to be somebody. Why are you praying for greatness? Today I hear on the pulpit, somebody says, you know, I was a poor person. I used to trek. I used to doing Gary money and night. But today, after God called us into the ministry, today, we are now able to buy uh, 30 bags of rice for the needy. Then you go on your knees and you start praying, Oh God, enlarge my coast. Why do you want God to enlarge your coast? Because you too want to become somebody. You saw that person. You saw what has happened to that person. So you are now crying for greatness. I want to be great. Why do you want to be great? Because you want to satisfy your pride. As a person. So this is what Brother James was speaking about. That if your purpose of praying is to spend it on the lust. Either the lust of the flesh or the lust of the eyes or the pride of life. If that is what your prayer points are. Christ won't answer such prayer points. Rather, Satan will answer for you. Do you know the book of Matthew chapter 7? Jesus said, On the last day, people will come and say, We did great things in your name. We did great things in your name. Oh no, we performed miracles in your name. God, you are the one that provided me the private jet. You are the one that provided me the cars. The 15 cars in my compound, the houses in, in Bahamas, the house in Ghana, the house in Tanzania, the house in South Africa. I prayed and you provided it for me. You know, I asked you to make me great. Today, everybody knows me worldwide. I was a popular person. You no, know, my music ministry was off the chart. I was the first Christian musician to sing and top the music board all around the world for three weeks straight. Oh, I was an usher and you know I did this, I did that. And Christ will tell them, I don't know you. I don't know you. How could I have answered your prayers when I don't know you? I don't know you. I'm sorry, I don't know you. 
you say you use my name, but I'm sorry. If if you have used my name, I probably would have known you. That oh oh yeah, you you are the guy that used my name that time. Oh, I know you, I know you are, ah, but uh you have a sin, that's why you can't enter. Jesus said, even this ones, he will tell them, I don't know you. So, the question is, if Jesus did not know them, who has been answering their prayers? If Jesus does not know them, and there is no record of them with Jesus, and they claim to have been using the name of Jesus to pray, and they have been given testimony that it was Jesus that made them great. Oh, it was Jesus that provided for us. It was Jesus that answered our prayers. If we called on Jesus, I went for seven days thy fasting on that prayers and God answered me. If there have been answers to their prayers, who has been answering that prayer? That's why I know that if Jesus does not know them, and Jesus has not been the one answering the prayers, then Satan has been the one answering their prayers, fattening them for hell. You know when you buy a Christmas goat or a Christmas fowl? I remember the last time we bought Christmas fowl in the house. My children were... Okay, no, I think, yeah, some people came to dash us Christmas fowl. So we had like three in the house. And my children were always feeding. They're always looking for what to feed the chicken with. And I thought, oh, my children are falling in love with the chicken. So I told their mom, maybe we do not kill this chicken on Christmas Day. Then we still used to celebrate Christmas. Now we don't again. Um, maybe we don't kill the chicken on Christmas Day because my children are falling in love with the chicken. But a few days in the Christmas, my children was, were talking and I heard them preparing to eat the chicken they've been feeding. So I said, like, I thought you guys fell in love with the chicken. That's why you are feeding the chicken. And I said, no, we are feeding the chicken so we can eat it. We don't want you to reduce in size because it's in our house. We need to grow fatter. So when I'm eating it, I will be eating fat chicken. So I was like, wow. So you guys were fattening the chicken for eating. And that's what Satan does. He can answer prayer points just to ensure you will never pray the right one. Who oh, we have, I have men who have been in ministries for years. 15 years, 16 years, 70 years. And Satan has been fattening them for hell. He has been answering them as much as possible so that they don't feel the need to know that they've been praying amiss. That Christ has not been the one answering their prayers. Satan has been the one meeting their needs so that he can get more people to follow the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. But we are going to cry to God as a group. Satan is not permitted to answer any prayers. If you pray amiss in the name of Jesus, that prayer will not be answered in Jesus' name. Satan will not have the opportunity to deceive you with an answer. Because it is when you now move close to Christ, or you finally surrender your life to Jesus Christ properly, that's when you will now come to realize that Satan has been the one answering your prayers. That is why, brethren, when many of us give our life to Jesus Christ afresh and totally, Satan takes what he gives us. <laughs> Those things that Satan gave me, when I finally gave my life to Jesus Christ, he collected them. And thank God for genuine coming to Christ. I was ready to let them go. And I lost so much. But I was happy. I'd rather let them go than hold on to Satan's property and say I'm going to heaven. And that's why many of us have been afraid to really give our life to Jesus Christ. Because we know that the day we decide for Jesus, Satan will come for his property. And you don't want to leave Satan's property. And you don't want to leave Jesus. It doesn't work. As long as Satan's property is with you, he's fattening you for hell. So brethren, the prayer points we want to take to God must be prayer points that are led by the Spirit. The opposite of the Spirit is the flesh. And the opposite of the flesh is the Spirit. 
Let's look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Um, I want to use, let me read from the Berean Study Bible. Berean Study Bible. It says, For the flesh craves what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are opposed to each other, so that you do not do what you want. Um, let me read the Young Literal Translation. For the flesh doth desire contrary to the spirit, and the spirit desire contrary to the flesh, and these are opposed one to the other, that the things that ye may will, that ye may not do. So, the spirit is against the flesh. The flesh is against the spirit. So, whenever you pray according to the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, you are praying against the spirit. And that's why God does not answer the spirit of those who are against him. You can't be against God and still be expecting God to answer prayers. So, whenever you are on the side of the flesh, to satisfy your lust, God will not answer such prayers. So Satan moves in to answer such prayers. So I see services. I see conventions. I see camp meetings. Gathering. And all that is being talked about is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And God is upset. Because everything we are doing in that service is against God. So when we gather together and we are praying for prosperity, Oh God, increase us. Oh God, make me great. Oh God, do this. And it's all about you. You are praying against the Spirit. When that man of God, so-called, was preaching that lust of the high sermon, what was he doing? He was preaching against the Spirit. In such a gathering, miracles might be happening. God is not there. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. You can't be doing a, something against God and you expect God there. So, both of them are against one another. So, I, and I, I'm taking us to, by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit is taking us to the ending of that verse. The, the ending of that verse. New King James Version says, for the flesh lost against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do things that you wish. So, a person that is praying in the spirit does not pray for what he wishes or what she wishes. Your prayer point is not about what you wish now. I wish I, wish I had money. That cannot be your prayer point. I wish I had children. That cannot be your prayer point. I wish our church is bigger than this. That cannot be your prayer point. The day you begin to pray what you wish, that is the day you begin to pray according to the flesh, God does not answer that prayer. And congratulations to some of us that God loves you so much He has refused to answer your prayers. Congratulations. You are lucky. The unlucky ones among us, God allows Satan to answer their prayers. But for the lucky ones, God will even stop Satan from answering their prayer. So you remain on that warm spot, rolling and rolling and not moving forward. And the reason why you are not getting answers to prayers is because you are praying against the Spirit of God. You are praying for what you wish. You are praying for the things you want. Your prayer is about you. God does not answer such prayers. It's a prayer against the Spirit. It's a prayer that is against the Spirit. Now the Bible says, For we do not walk by sight. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith 
is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. That is, faith. The prayers you will pray in faith were not determined by what you saw. It wasn't determined by what you heard. It was determined by an hunger of the spirit that was placed in you. It was an imposed prayer that came from God himself. That is, when you want to pray the correct prayer point, you first go to God to go and beg God to give you prayer points. So it's not what you wish that you are praying for. It's not what you want that you are praying for. You did not look at your circumstance to create prayer points. You went into the kitchen, you did not see food. You converted that to prayer point. You are praying for what you want to. <laughs> you entered your wardrobe. You did not see shirt. You are not praying for shirt. You are praying for what you want. You will be surprised that if you allow the Spirit leading in prayers, you enter your pantry, it is empty, you go to the place of prayer, and you wait on God to lead you into prayer, and what you are praying for is not food. It's something else entirely. Because food will come. When you obey the will of God, and you follow the will of God, He will provide you food. He will provide you cloth. Sometimes it is when he is ready to give it to you, you now say, yes, you are now free to pray. Sometimes there is no food and he doesn't allow you, allow you to even pray for food. Then when he is ready to answer that prayer, you now say, okay, pray for food. Now, it is no longer because you are hungry, it is because he has given you permission to pray. I will never forget when some children were kidnapped in Nigeria. And the whole country read prayer points. I saw a lot of prayer points praying everywhere. And one of the teachers is in our group. She contacted me and said, Brother Femi, please pray with us. My children in school have been kidnapped. And I said, okay, we will pray. So I took it to God in prayers. And God said, don't pray about it. And we did not pray about it. For weeks they were kidnapped. We did not pray. Then one day, God said, it's time for you to pray about it. So we prayed about it. And I think two days later, the children were released. Now, um... It is not that we prayed because we were pressured. We did not pray because we felt empathy for the children and the family that were kidnapped. We did not pray because we felt love for them. We prayed because we were led by God. If we are prayed because of emotions, it is the loss of the flesh that has pushed us to pray. So when Jesus said, everyone that asks, Receive it. It is Jesus is speaking about those that act according to the Spirit. The Bible says in three different places in the Bible, for those who are led of the Spirit are the children of God. And Jesus said, Which of you will your children ask for fish and you will give that child a snake? Or the child will ask for a a bread, and you will give that child a stone. He now says, if you, who are so wicked, can take care of your own children, what about your father, which is in heaven? So, this lets me know that God does not deny the, uh, the prayers of his children. But the question is, are you qualified to be a child? Because it says, only those who are led of the Spirit are the children of God. So you are free to be calling God Father. But you could be a vagabond who is led by the lust of the eyes, by the lust of the flesh, and by the pride of life. And you will be here saying, I am a child of God. And God will be telling you, no, I don't know him. I don't know her. They are not my children. Because they are not led of the Spirit. He that is led of the Spirit is opposite to the flesh. So the person that is led of the Spirit does not see what the flesh is saying. So when people gather and the loss of the eyes and the loss of the flesh is making them to 
call on poverty. Oh, you demon of poverty. Die by fire. Fall into the gutter. Die now. I shoot you with the gun of God. And they appear those prayers. A child led of the spirit does not understand why they are praying such prayer points. Because I am led of the spirit. Everything I will have is dependent on the spirit. I don't have a desire. So I don't have a desire in the place of prayer. I don't have a prayer point that is based on my pain or based on my feeling. My flesh does not suggest prayer points to me because I'm not led by the flesh. My flesh, my eyes, does not suggest prayer points to me because I'm not led by my eyes. It's not because I saw it and now go to the place of prayer and converted it to prayers. No. It is because the Holy Spirit has said I to pray about it. That's why I'll pray about it. And because I'm led by the Spirit, my prayer points are opposite to the prayer points of the other persons who are led by the flesh. So our prayers are against one another. So when the person who, has, who is led by the flesh comes to God in prayers, God does not see a child, God sees a vagabond. And the answer of the prayers of vagabonds don't get answered because God does not see himself as their father. The Bible says only those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. They are the ones that are called children. So when God says, I will take care of my children, He's only talking to those who are led by the Spirit and not those who their flesh is pushing them everywhere. Pastor, your auditorium, what pushed you to build it? The Spirit or your eyes? If it, is, if it is your eyes that made you design that altar, if it is not God that said this is what I wanted, if it is your eyes, God is absent on it. <laughs> those, and those, those testimonies you've been shining up and down, if it is your eyes and your flesh that led you to pray it, it is contrary to God. It's an abomination unto God. It is contrary to God. It is against God. It is answered by the devil. You've been sharing the testimony of the devil. And that's why those who have heard your testimony have come to give their life to Jesus Christ. Not because they love Christ, but because they love the world. And after they spent few hours in church, few days, few months, few years, few decades and they look as if the thing is not happening, they backslide again. They, or they are, they are in church, they've learned the spirituality of the church, but they never really submit to the spirit. And they are chasing after the loss of the eyes, the pride of life, and the loss of the flesh. So brethren, what is going to back your prayer points? You that God loves so much, that God has refused to answer that prayer point. And God has refused Satan to answer your prayer point. Can I say congratulations? Congratulations. Now it is time to go back to God now and correct your prayer points. A true Christian wants to pray. We still go to the place of prayer. I mean, asking God, what should I pray about? That is a child of God. He's been led by the Spirit. He's been led by the Spirit. And that's why sometimes, after we have finished a message like this, we don't really have big prayer points to give you. Why? Because we want you to go to God in prayers. Let God direct you into prayers we are to pray. Because we are hearing one message, but God is speaking to all of us in different ways. So if you have to rely on just the prayer points that were sent into the group, you could have missed your own prayer points. And that's why we should say, what has God told you about while you are listening to the message? What did God tell you? Can you take it to God in prayers? Because what God has pointed your heart to while you are listening to this message is what He wants you to pray about. It's what He wants you to deal with. So if you limit yourself to just the prayer points that are said in the group, you have to change yourself. And finally, can you go back to the Bible? All the Bible verses we have read. Can you go back to them? Study them. Is it true? Is that what the Bible says? 
then can you decide to obey today? Can you decide that you want to be a child of God? Many of us have just been in church for years. You were never a Christian. You've been going to church because you want a better life. You've been going to church because you want to please your flesh. You are afraid that demons might disturb you, so you came to Christ so that you could be protected. It's still the loss of the flesh that brought you to church. You are not yet a Christian. You are not yet a believer. Some of us came to church to look for contact. Some of us came to look for husband, for wife, for prosperity, for healing, for miracle. That's why you are there. Why do you go from one mountain to another, from one place to another, from one service to another, from one denomination to another, from one prophet to another? Why? Is it because you love Jesus so much and you just want to please Him? Or because you, your emotions, yourself is the one that is pushing you up and down? Brethren, if you are not yet a Christian, if you are not yet a child of God, if this world is what is still pushing you, this world that the Bible says is expired, if that was to still pushing you, then you are not yet a Christian. You can carry the badge of Christian on earth. On, on that day, Jesus will say, Sorry, I still don't know you. I don't know you. You were not led by the Spirit. It was your eyes that was leading you. It was your flesh that was directing It was your emotions that was leading you. You are not led by the Spirit. I don't know you. But before we get to that point where we hear that voice, can we cry to God tonight and become born again? Can we become Christians tonight? Can we become children of God tonight? And can our prayer points change? Now from just being me, 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 my heart is leading me, my, my flesh is leading me to fulfilling what God wants. To seeking the face of God and asking Him to help us to pray. I believe that by tomorrow, by the grace of God, we will take that to God in prayer. To teach us how to pray. And to tell us what to pray about. But for tonight, can you sort yourself out with God? Can you get ready to lose any miracle that Satan organized for you? If I were you, I would go to God and say, God, I am ready. Take away every answer to prayers that Satan gave me. I don't want I don't want. I want to make heaven. Heaven is more important because this earth is temporary. Satan does not give anything without putting death inside. There is death in the pot. <laughs> so, I don't know how God has spoken to you. I don't know what God has said to you. It is time to take it to God in prayers. It is time to seek God over this matter. I don't really have prayer points to give us tonight. Whatever God has spoken to you about, take it to him in prayers. God bless you.